We got another story related to India. Uh, I know this has sort of been an India heavy week uh, on on these streams here, uh, but uh, but it's important to talk about because let's be honest, corporate media isn't going to really bring this shit up. Uh, this comes from the World Socialist website, uh, a website that I have talked about and, and use as a source quite often. Um, and I encourage you guys to to check them out and join their email list and, and read some of their stories as well. Um, Gray Zone, which was uh, and, and, and Consortium News, uh, they published the last story about Yaku Perez, and they do a lot of great coverage about um, C Central America, Latin America, uh, U.S. militarism and intervention. Um, so they're a great source for that. Uh, really, really great, intelligent, and in-depth journalism from from those uh, from those cats. So Gray Zone. World Socialist website, uh, Left Voice. Uh, uh, you know th these are these are some of the sources that I that I that I trust that I use, uh, and of course you know you have people like Jimmy Dore um, and and Lee Camp and Eleanor Goldfield over at Mint Press News. That's another great source. Um, I'm just kind of listing all the great sources that I use. Um, but yeah, those are some of the, the those are some of the great good places to go and get information from. Uh, that's not corporate control. That the narrative is not controlled by the corporations, and they and and you sure should know that corporations aren't going to be talking about uh, this sort of stuff, right? So, um, there's a a million bankers, a million bankers that are now on strike in India, uh, and they're doing they're doing this as part of a two day action. It's a two day action, um, and these are bankers that work in the public sector, and what they're what they're striking against is privatizing those banks. Uh, now, a lot of Indian banks have already been privatized. I think there was 14 in 2019, uh, and then it got absorbed by a bunch of other private banks, right? So they want to they want to privatize these banks. And what the bankers are concerned about, what the what the people that work in the banks are concerned about, are um, you know the the fact that when when things go private. It's the workers that lose out a lot. So they're concerned that once this bank gets privatized, they're going to cut pay, they're going to cut jobs, and then they're going to make people work longer hours, more more grueling tasks, take on more responsibilities for less pay, um, and it's basically going to fuck them over in the end. So they don't want that, you know. And and this isn't them coming out and being like, "Oh, we don't want more responsibilities, more work." Blah. No, it's let's do the right amount of work. Let's treat the workers fairly. And uh, let's make sure that they're being paid the right amount for for the work that they're doing, right? And in, in a lot of situations, when things go private, this is the same thing that the farmers are saying. When privatization comes into play, it's the workers that lose in the end. They don't make a lot more money. They they are not well taken care of. They lose their health insurance. They lose, you know, and, and India doesn't particularly have health insurance, but they lose their livelihoods. They're not able to afford their apartments. They're not able to afford any sort of leisure things, um, which, again is important. It's important to have some leisure in your life. And it's important to uh, have a, a system in a society that encourages um, leisure in your life, right? Work hard, play hard kind of mentality. But nobody's playing hard because everybody constantly has to be working. Uh, and it's not even working hard. It's just working period, right? That's that's sort of what uh, American capitalism uh, pushes you to do. And, and now India is kind of taking that um, uh, taking those lessons from American capitalism and 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 clearly uh, trying to implement them in India. So a couple of you know again the World Socialist website interviewed some of the bankers on the ground, uh, and they basically a lot of them are saying very similar things. What are they saying? Well, common people will be affected the most when the banks go private. You know, um, common people are taken advantage of the most, right? Uh, interest rates might go up. Uh, savings interest rates might go down. They might not be able to uh, get a loan uh, as easily because of various different corporate rules that they have, right? Um, if they want to get a credit card, it's got a higher APR. Um, or they they might have fees attached to what they're doing. My bank tried to do that a couple of years ago where they were like, oh, if you have less than X amount of dollars, we're going to charge you a fee um, and then it's going to become a daily fee based on you know how little income you have. So it's like, okay, so you are penalizing me for being poor. And I called the bank and I kind of yelled at the lady to be like, you understand how this sounds insane, right? And like how you're penalizing people 
uh, for being poor. And she was like, well, it's just corporate policy. We're just trying to, you know, do, um, do better. Um, and da, 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 da. And it was just like a bunch of fucking corporate jargon thrown at me. And when I finally like got a hold of somebody higher up, they were like, well, if you connect your bank to your mom's account and make it a subsidiary and do all this stuff and jump through these hoops, then we won't charge you fees for, for being poor. Right. So that's how I got grandfathered in, but it's like, people don't need to go through that sort of stuff. And India being a developing country where a lot of people are either unbanked or underbanked, having a, a private corporate bank come in and take over a bunch of publicly owned banks uh, just means that more people are going to be punished for being poor. And India already has a problem with income inequality, just like America does, and, and poverty, right? And, and in some cases, it's worse than, than America. And now privatizing these banks is only going to make things uh, far worse. And again, you know, I, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago where like I have to make car payments and I've lost a good 80% of my income, you know, and I'm, and I'm trying to get a, a lot of that back by taking part time jobs and 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 doing virtual shows and hoping for donations and sustaining members. But, you know, they the, the, the bank that has my car loan doesn't give a shit. They just want their money. So I can't make the payments like I was making them. And they want me to defer the payments. If they defer the payments, then they're going to garner interest. And the first time that I make a payment, it all goes to interest. This is how private banks work, right? And then they say that, oh, if you've been affected by COVID, we technically can't make you pay the interest, but we can still charge you interest. So regardless of what happens, you know, you might not be making a payment towards your interest, but they're going to they're going to put a portion of your of your payment towards interest anyway because it has to meet the minimum balance account uh built minimum balance amount um and then if you're not making the minimum balance amount then uh you're going to you're going to accrue all this additional payment and additional interest and additional late fees and every time you make a payment it's making less and less of a dent so they trap you you have to pay something because if you un if you don't pay then you know they can repossess your car and i need my car for work so it's just this trap and again it's one of those things where it's like a private bank like this doesn't give a shit about what you're going through. They just want their money. And in India, where people already have financial hardships, this is what's going to happen there now. And it's going to happen there more frequently. It's going to create more of a, uh, a, 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 a poverty problem. And it's going to create a debt economy because that's what America runs on. That's why the banks got bailed out. They got $6 trillion and you still have to make your payments. They didn't cancel the debts. They didn't take that and they go, well, we're going to distribute this amongst all of our, our, our customers. They didn't do that. And they did that on purpose because they don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck that you've been affected by covid and lost the majority of your of your pay and in india that's going to continue to happen now that's going to start happening now it's going to make the problem worse that's why these bankers are going on strike what i just described again uh another person says common people's savings will be plundered and that's similar a lot of people lost their savings when modi decided to um, remove the 500 and 1,000 note out of circulation. Uh, and, it, oh, it'll strengthen the American rupee and it'll stop, uh, you know, the criminal underground from uh, attacking, you know, uh, our, our economy and so on and so forth. Well, it didn't do any of that, right? Because what ended up happening was uh, the, the criminals that are laundering the money through a lot of the privatized banks in India continue to launder their banks they just took a bunch of their cash they just took a bunch of the 500 and 1000 rupee notes and they and they just deposited them into their accounts to get laundered even faster but the people that lost out in an 80 percent cash economy like india is the people that lost out are the middle class are the poor people are the people living in rural communities that can't get to a bank that are underbanked that are completely unbanked and a solution for that was oh well maybe i'll just you know give everybody a free bank account in india well that's great but you should have thought about that before you removed uh these large bills out of circulation and completely completely kneecapped the working class in india so again, this is a measure that will completely kneecap the working class in India as well. 
So uh, another thing that they, another quote is, no political parties have ever supported our struggle. So they're basically calling out to say, well, the BJP doesn't stand by the people of India and the Congress party doesn't stand by the people of India, right? Uh, what the Congress party does is worse than the BJP. At least the BJP comes out and says, hey, we're going to privatize the, the, the banks uh, and, you know, it'll probably be, be good for you. Like they, they try to convince you that it's good for you. Well, the Congress party goes a different route to propagandize to people um, uh, to support neoliberal economic policies. They use uh, the there, there's two different communist parties in India, right? There's a traditional communist party and a more Marxist communist party. Well, those parties are neither Marxist nor are they communist other than name alone, right? They call themselves that, but in reality, they're social Democrats. And social Democrats historically have had a pattern of siding with capitalists. They support capitalists. That's what they do. They support the capitalists and, um, you know, they're for American capitalism, that, or not just American capitalism, for any, any sort of thing that can help uh, capitalists make more money. So the Congress Party is now using these these fake communists and fake Marxists that are really social Democrats uh, who are supporting the Congress Party and saying, no, 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 come join us and vote for the Congress Party because they're going to help you guys. And in reality, they're not helping anybody. They're just going to push more neoliberal economic policies um, and then and then tell you and then tell you like, oh, if you oppose us, then you don't really care about democracy, so on and so forth. Again, very parallel to the way things run in America. Now, the bankers have come out and said, if the government is unwilling to listen to us and, and stop privatizing these public banks um, that are here to help people, then they're going to do what the farmers did. They're going to join the farmers in fighting back against capitalist neoliberal economic policies that crush worker rights. Uh, and they're going to push back against the government even further. They're going to they're going to uh, continue to um, uh, do exactly what they're what the farmers are doing, and continue to be on strike. And look, this this has affected people financially, right? It has affected people financially. People are not able to deposit stuff. They're not able to take out cash when they need to. You know, there, uh, there's there's no ATM services. So now this is affecting all of the other working class people who now, if they want to continue earning an income the way that they've been earning an income, have to stand in solidarity with the bankers because the bankers are essentially fighting on their behalf. Oh, I'm getting oh, Holly says the stream is stuttering. Huh. Holly, let me know if the stream is still stuttering. Uh, I'm not sure if if that's still the case here. Uh, I'm popping over to check the streams. Um, looks like they're running okay, but I could be wrong. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, if it's still if it's still stuttering, leave another comment, and I'll see what the hell is going on. It looks like everything is. Is working out okay. Um, but the last thing I want to bring up in, in regards to this is this sort of stuff has been done before, right? When when the Congress Party, which is like the Democrats of India, back in 1991, they started this process. I'm, I'm sure it started well before that. There, were, there was neoliberalism happening well before that in India, but 1991 was uh, apparently this big, big shift over right? Because India was basically turned into a cheap labor hub uh, to help global markets. Basically, uh, meaning when when corporations and companies want to use cheap labor to make a bunch of their stuff, but then charge a, a fuck ton more money, right? Like like Nike and stuff, like they'll go to India because it's it's cheaper labor. There's There is a lower minimum wage. And in a lot of cases, they don't even really have to meet that because there's nobody monitoring whether people are meeting the minimum wage or not. And now this idea, this is how globally uh, xenophobia is 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 manufactured and created. So cheap labor goes to India. People in India are not paid as much for the work that they're doing. But hey, you get a you get a little bit of a discount on your favorite T-shirt or what have you, right? This contributed to xenophobia against immigrants, and and it contributed to a lot of the stereotypes that you hear, right? Oh man, they took our jobs. They took our jobs. Well, they took their jobs because politicians 
in in both India and America decided that this was okay to do. So American workers suffer by losing their jobs, by losing their livelihood, and Indian workers are are, are suffering by not even having a chance to earn a decent income. Um, you know, this is why you have migrant workers in India, which was a problem at the beginning of the pandemic because we they didn't know how to get them home. Um, these migrant workers come in, they work in these factories for a period of time, and then they make a bunch of money, and then they have to go home to be like, hey, here, this is some this is some money, right? In a lot of other cases, too, because that's the system in India, because cheap labor is what it is in India, uh, you know, both most adults in, in the family have to work to provide for the family. So they'll get a job here. Well, you know, the husband or wife will get a job here and then send a portion of what they make here back home. But that's not to say that the people back home are just kind of sitting and twiddling their thumbs waiting for this income to come in. They're also working. So it creates this cycle of global poverty by doing shit like this. And the Congress Party was responsible for that. And now the Congress Party wants the workers to be on their side and vote for them, right? With the same tactics the Democrats do. Oh, we like you guys. Oh, is there an election coming up? Oh, I didn't even know. Oh, that's so crazy. Yeah, you should vote for us because we love you. We like you a lot. Look at this rainbow pin I have. Look, I, I put I put a Black Lives Matter uh, sticker on, on, on the drones that are going to be bombing brown people and black people across the country. Isn't that fun? You should vote for me. The only time they say they, they care about the workers is when they want your votes. And now, you know, you have the BJP pushing exactly what the Congress Party was pushing for uh, back in the 90s. And the Congress Party wants to go back to that, and and they're using these fake Marxists and fake communists as a way to do that. So keep an, So this is something else you you should keep an eye on, um, you know these these organizations because some of them might come out like you know if if there is a a socialist Marxist or communist organization that's like yay Democratic Party that should be suspect because. A true socialist and communist would look at the duopoly and call it out for what it is and wouldn't side with a corporate party that is effectively uh, uh, looking to start wars, looking to stifle the working class uh, and, and provided less relief than the, than the, the authoritarian Republican did, which is what the COVID bill was. I went a little, little over, all over the place there. Um, but I'm going to look at your comments. Uh, aren't there cooperative banks in India, a woman's bank? I'm not sure. I do know that there's a lot of banks that are controlled by the public sector. I'm not sure if they are public banks, but it seems like they were a lot better and helped more people um, than some of the private banks do. Because a lot of the private banks, as I mentioned, don't really give a shit whether you're going through a, a personal strife. They just want to get their fucking money and, and move on to the next thing. Um, so I'm not sure I would, I would have to dig into the banking system a little bit closer in India, but from what I'm seeing in this article, uh, it seems like a lot of these bankers are, um, are part of the public sector. Uh, it's outsourcing. Yeah, that's, they, they basically, there, there was, it's, it's a global joint effort for outsourcing. It's a global joint effort to, uh, you know, fuck over the workers in, in two different countries now. Uh, and, and Holly confirms, yep, we got more money from Trump. Uh, and you got to figure too. And I talked to Nico about this, Nico house, uh, where, you know, that, that interview is going to be coming out in the, in the next few weeks here. But, uh, I talked to him and he, and I was like, it's, it's a little over half 1.9 trillion versus 3 trillion, which is what Trump approved. So Biden approved a little over a half again, uh, no Republican voted for $1.9 trillion. Uh, it could have been more because the Democrats got it passed anyway without Republican support at all. So really, they could have asked for five trillion dollars, not made any concessions, no Republican votes for it. And then we have a bigger and better stimulus than we did under Trump. But they didn't do that. They also cut uh, more people from getting the stimulus. So not only are there people like me that fall through the cracks, but even more people that make a little too much money that are no longer gonna, uh, no, no longer eligible to get the stimulus. So really, um, it's it's even less than half of what Trump did. So it's it's an even worse stimulus, even worse relief 
than what Trump proposed, what was given to us under the Trump administration. So again, you know, if there are organizations that call themselves socialists or Marxists or communists or so on and so forth that come out and they start championing the Biden administration for doing this, th that's a false flag. And that should immediately be like red alert, fucking don't trust these people because they seem like they are um, towing, the, towing the line for the establishment and you can't trust. OK, that was weird. I did see that jump there. Uh, all of a sudden, my camera. OK, so it's it's telling me that my connection is decent. So it seems like it's like a Wi-Fi problem. My router is like two feet from my computer, so I shouldn't be having this problem again. I might have to contact StreamYard uh, about that issue, but. Yeah, uh, as as Holly pointed out earlier, that the stream was stuff was stuttering there. Uh, Sarah over on Rockfin says this is what corporations called emerging markets. Exactly. Yeah, uh, India is an emerging market. They're a developing country, so there's new opportunities for them to go in um, and and really really fuck the working class over. Right. Like really, they're, they're like, we tried this stuff on the Americans. We tried this stuff in our country. Here's here's how we fucking, uh, you know, uh, didn't succeed. But here's how we can succeed in India. Here's how what we can do. Let's use, you know, th these tactics. So that's what they're doing. And, and uh, clearly it's happening in the banking uh, industry. It's also happening in the agribusiness industry as well. Uh, and <laughs> Uh, Sarah says Biden is a Republican. Sometimes we needs reminding. Agreed. Um, I tweeted this out the the day that uh, you know uh, they they said that he got elected officially, and I said, boy, this is a big day uh, for the Republican Party because finally they have a true Republican president, uh, and that was Joe Biden. Joe Biden is a hundred percent Republican president. He's voted more like a Republican than a Democrat. Um, and when Clinton wanted to do, oh, well, Democrats need to become tough on crime so that we can seem like we're we're really, you know, sticking it to the sticking it to those criminals and keeping America safe, just like the Republicans say. And now the Republicans can't say that we're not tough enough on crime. Joe Biden was the one that that pushed for that even more, that basically wrote a bill that made America tough on crime to the point where it increased fucking um, mass incarceration. So, uh, you know, and again, he sides with segregationists. He's pro war on drugs. And who is really pro war on drugs? Nixon and Reagan, two of the biggest Republican presidents that have caused economic catastrophes in this country, that have caused mass incarcerations, that have uh, put out this racist war on drugs on people. So, again, Joe Biden sided with them, further proving that he's really just a Republican. And further proving that any liberal that 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 champions someone like Joe Biden that makes excuses for Joe Biden is really making uh, an excuse for republicanism. They're really coming out and saying, "Well, I'm okay with republicanism. I'm okay with conservatism. I'm okay with this sort of economic um, uh, hardship that they put on the working class. I'm okay with it as long as it's got a nice face attached to it. As long as it's got a friendly little face attached to it. When Joe Biden ain't your fucking friend." Unity. Yeah, exactly, Sarah. That, that's what they call for. They call for party unity, uh, which is bullshit because that's not what that's not what's happening. Uh, Holly says the stream seems OK now. OK, so that might have just been a weird little glitch, but I will talk to StreamYard about that. Uh, thank you for letting me know. I appreciate that. That's why these chats are so helpful. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, 
whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. There you'll find past episodes of uh, of various shows that I uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video.